Okay, so in this problem, we're told a 1,280 kilogram car pulls a 350 kilogram trailer. The car exerts a horizontal force of 3.6 times 10 to the 3 newtons against the ground in order to accelerate. What force does the car exert on the trailer? Assume an effective friction or coefficient of 0.15 for the trailer. So we're given a few things. Um, let me write down the coefficient of friction they give us which is 0.15 and we're given the mass of a trailer in this car and so what we're trying to find is the force the car is exerting on the trailer so when they're talking about that they're basically talking about the force of tension that this car is going to exert on this uh, trailer here right the force is going to exert on it by pulling it and uh, yeah so uh, we have that labeled and what we're going to be solving for is that tension T but the way we need to do it is first by drawing a free body diagram of every single force acting on both the objects. So starting off, obviously we have mg, and so I'm going to call this mc, mass of the car, times g. Right? This is just the force due to gravity. Right? The force due to gravity equals mg, and so I'm just writing it downwards for this car. And then for the trailer, we're going to say mtg, so the mass of the trailer times gravity. So we have that, um, and then we also have to label the um, force, the normal force for each of these. So the normal force always acts perpendicular to uh, what the object is touching, which is the result of Newton's law. So we can call this F sub N of the car, and then we'll call this F sub N of the trailer. So F sub N T, F sub N C. Uh, the other force we have is the force that the car is going to be exerting, right, in order to actually move. And so they give us that value. We can call this F applied. I'll label it as that. Um, so that's the force being applied. And then the last force is the force of friction. So this is going to be equal to mu times F sub n. And so I'm labeling it F sub n because I believe it's for both. Um, or sorry, yeah, so for the trailer, so it's basically mu times F sub n, and uh, yeah, so these are the different forces acting on it, so we have both gravities, the normal forces, the force being applied, and then the force of friction as a result, All right, right, there's going to be friction here, so we have to include that, Um, and yeah, so how are we going to solve for this problem? So we know what we're going to want to do is solve for t and the way we are going to do that is by first finding the acceleration that this thing is actually moving so uh we know they're going to have the same acceleration since they're connected so they're obviously going to be moving at the same speed and but we need to find that acceleration first in order to actually solve for this tension t you'll see why in a second uh but we need to solve for that first so the way we're going to do that is by summing the forces in the x so we're basically going to say some of the forces in the x and when i'm talking about the x i'm basically talking about all the forces acting along this x direction here so this is the x direction so any force like the friction forces along this tensions along this uh, the force being applied is along this but uh, the force due to gravity and the normal force is in the y so they're not in the x so we're not going to sum it here so uh, keep in mind you can say max, so the acceleration in the x. And so we know that these things are going to be moving with the same acceleration. So we're basically in the beginning, or for this part, going to treat them as one big object. Because they're going to be moving with the same acceleration. So if we treat them as one object, we're going to be able to solve for the acceleration of them. So that's the trick to the first part. So max equals and now we're summing up the forces in the x so if it goes to the right i'm going to say positive if it goes to the left i'm going to call it negative so that's just the general rule you do so to the right we have the force applied so we're just looking at the forces in the x and then we also have minus mu sub k times f sub n and so keep in mind this is just for the trailer so this basically could be f sub n of t. Um, but yeah, so this is negative because it's in that direction. 
And as I said before, T is in the X, but we're treating this as one big object. So you can essentially just imagine this is just one thing. So the tension doesn't really matter here. It's since they're just one big object. So we only have force applied and this uh, frictional force. So we can essentially ignore it. Um, but yeah, so if we wanted to solve for a sub x, we would just divide by m. So a sub x equals the force applied minus mu sub k times f sub n divided by m. So now we need to find uh, f sub n. So keep in mind, we know the mass of our, tr uh, right, of, so, of uh, this whole thing, right? Because when we did max, we're finding the acceleration of this whole object. So keep in mind, when I say m, I'm referring to the mass of both of them because we're finding the acceleration of both as one object. So the m here is actually both of them. Uh, force applied, we know, is just a value which they give us. Let me write that down, actually. It is, I'll just call it F applied like that, is 3.6 times 10 to the 3 newtons. So we know that value. Uh, and then the normal force, or sorry, the normal force times mu sub k. Keep in mind this is only for the trailer. So uh, we only have to take that into account. So we need to find the normal force acting on the trailer since this is the uh, force of friction as a result of the trailer. So how do we find the normal force of the trailer now? So the way we do that is we're going to sum the forces along the y of this trailer. So sum of the forces in the y, so obviously it's going to be equal to may, where ay is the acceleration in the y direction for this trailer. Keep in mind, though, the um, acceleration in the y is going to be 0. And the reason that is, is we're only moving along the x here. So velocity in the y is 0 this way. We're not moving at all. If velocity is y, accel uh, acceleration has to be 0. Sorry. If velocity is 0, acceleration has to be 0. So this value is 0, uh, and then this whole term would be 0. So basically, the sum of the forces are going to be equal to 0. And now we just add the forces in the y here. And so we're only doing it for the trailer. Keep that in mind. So we have f sub n t minus mtg. Keep in mind, uh, if it goes upwards, I denote it as positive. Uh, if it goes downwards, I like to denote it as negative. Um, and yeah, you'll see that we have this formula right here. But if we move this to the other side, basically the normal force on the trailer is equal to m or the mass of the trailer times its gravity. Right, and that should be obvious. You should just know that by now. Since these are the two forces in the y, these two have to be equal. Um, but yeah, so now we find f sub n here. Key minus f sub n corresponded to f sub n t here. So I didn't write that in, but that should have just been known since uh, the force of friction is only for this trailer. So now we have that. And if I rewrite this, just plugging in all the values, keep in mind f sub n t is equal to mtg. So you can write that like that. And now we just know all these values. It's a matter of plugging it in. So the force applied, as I said before, is 3.6 times 10 to the 3 minus mu sub k, which is 0.15, times the mass of the trailer, 350, times gravity, uh, right, just g. This is the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, it's just a constant value. And then we're dividing by the mass of the whole system. So uh, if we want to find the mass of everything, we just add it up. So that would be 350 plus 1280. And now you see here we have everything to so, uh, solve for a sub x. So when you do it, the acceleration in the x is 1.8929 meters per second squared. So now we have the acceleration in the x. And so uh, now that we have that, we're basically just going to, uh, or that we know that the acceleration for both of them is the same as just the individual. So now we're going to sum the forces in the x, but we're going to be able to solve for t now that we have the acceleration of this one object. So uh, I'm going to do it over here, actually. So sum the forces in the x equals max. But keep in mind, we're only focusing on the trailer here now to solve for t. 
Um, and then the thing you should keep in mind, right, is that we have a sub x. So let me write it like this. And then we just want to sum up the forces in the x. So since we're only dealing with the trailer, we have the force of friction and t. So you can say this equals t minus mu sub k times f sub n. Uh, and then you would divide by m, obviously. Keep in mind, m in this case now is only for the trailer because we're dealing with only the trailer here, where the acceleration of only the trailer. Um, and yeah, so we basically have the tension, which is what we're solving for. Uh, so I actually shouldn't have done it this way. Let me rewrite it. Since we're not solving for acceleration, we're solving for tension, right? So just add this to the other side. Uh, and basically, you'll get the tension is equal to max plus mu sub k times f sub n. So pretty simple. Uh, we can just basically plug in the values now. So m, uh, m is the mass of the trailer, as I said before, times the acceleration of the trailer, uh, 1.8929. And so keep in mind, we were only dealing with forces in the x. So when we sum this, we don't have to take into account these two um, because they're, they're, their x components are zero uh, since they're only in the y. Uh, and then, yeah, so plus mu sub k, 0.15, multiplying that by the normal force, uh, right? F sub n, we decided was equal to mg. So obviously the mass is uh, 350 kilograms times g, which is 9.8. And uh, yeah, so plugging all this in, you'll get tension equals, let me actually plug it in myself, 350 times 1.8929 plus 0.15 times 350 times 9.8. And so you should get 1177.015. So I'm just going to round to 1200 newtons. You can round however you'd like or however your teacher wants you to, uh, but essentially the tension is gonna be 1200 newtons. So uh, yeah, that's your answer. And just a quick recap, uh, basically you wanna start with your free body diagram, that's what you should always do. And then just, uh, I noticed that I'm gonna be solving for T, so I'm gonna sum the forces in the X to get the acceleration. With the acceleration, I can just focus on this one object uh, and then just solve for T by summing the forces in the X again. Uh, but yeah, so the trick to this problem was mainly recognizing that you can ignore T if you just treat it as one big object. Uh, but yeah, so this is your answer, and uh, hopefully you found this video useful.